Hey, what's going on guys? This is going to be the first in a series of videos about the load development for my 7mm Winchester Short Mag and I'm going to be shooting the Sierra 183 grain hollow point boat tail bullets. These are very impressive looking, they're very long and sleek and the pointed hollow point on here has been closed up almost to where there's not even a hollow point in there anymore. Very impressive looking bullet. So I have shot 100 of the Hornady 180 grain ELD bullets. Uh, these look very impressive on paper, but I just don't know if my rifle really liked these. Um, I may end up revisiting these at some point and doing a very thorough test like I'm about to do with the 183s. So I've got some Sierra 183s. I took a piece of Hornady brass that actually cracked under its first firing on the neck. And so I cut that out with a hacksaw and you can pinch the neck closed and then you can force a bullet to be seated down into there and then you close it into your rifle and that forces the bullet back once it hits the lands and it forces it down into the case pull it out measure it to its ogive and then i actually took a bullet and seated it into a dummy cartridge with real neck tension on it and i smoked the uh the bullet with a lighter to where there's a uh, black residue on it and then i closed it into the chamber to see if the lands and grooves were still touching the bullet. Uh, in this case they were, so I backed them off till I no longer saw the uh, lands and grooves touching the bullet, and then I backed that out another 25 thousandths. So we're gonna start off with 25 thousandths jump on this bullet, um, and once I do the initial uh, charge test, so I'm going to start off with different charges in each set of groups right here, uh, once I pick a good group out of those, then I will do a jump test. So then I'll back these out, uh, probably say 20 thousandths uh, between each different group, and then I'll even stretch one closer to the lands as well to see what uh, type of jump it likes. So we're starting out with something simple. We're just going to start off with 66 grains, 65.3, 64.6, and 63.9 grains of Retumbo going to be igniting those with CCI 250 Magnum primers. With these Hornady 180 grain, um, I think that pretty much the max charge I could go with with the Retumbo was 66 grains. So I'm starting off with that as my max and backing down in charges. So I'm going to see if it likes less pressure or maybe this bullet likes the higher pressure. We'll find out. Also, I'm going to be paying attention to a uh, bolt lift and seeing if uh, I'm getting more extractor marks and things like that on the brass. So that's the intro. Let's get to loading. Here's a quick look at the chart that I came up with to kind of help me keep track of all my uh, reload data and all my different tests I've done. So you can see the different charges, overall length the same, quantity, that's how many bullets I'm shooting in each group. And then once I shoot them, I'll go and fill out group size and my velocities with standard deviations and things like that. And then here's the cartridge info with the components used. 12 cartridges, really simple process. Just go ahead and prime them up, except for I've got tumbling media stuck in that one's flash holes. So always check your flash holes, make sure they're clear. You don't want to have anything obstructing that. That would definitely skew your test results. So, as far as the Tika is concerned, um, these seven WSMs, I'm shooting them out of my custom Tika T3X that I had uh, rebarreled to a seven millimeter with a one to eight twist. That's why I'm shooting these big, heavy 7mm bullets. Uh, as far as the Tika is concerned, I have not cleaned the barrel in probably 60 or so rounds, and I'm not going to. I don't want to be concerned with, uh, well, maybe my barrel isn't fouled up. No, I'm just leaving it fouled up, and I'm going to go out there and shoot a couple 160 grain uh, hunting bullets to get it warmed up, and then we're going to switch over to the test, and we'll start shooting these Sierra 180s. So it won't be cold bore. Um, before I start shooting to uh, try and eliminate those variables as well. Uh, this Hornady brass, the primer pockets, I wouldn't say they're bad, but they're loosening up. But like I said, uh, I've been running these pretty hard. And the, with like stiff bolt lifts and uh, stuff like that. But we'll find out how these Sierras want. They, we'll find out how these Sierras do. All right, that's enough priming. I will skip ahead, so I'm not going to bore you guys to death with this. All right, we've got my powder hopper full of Hodgdon Retumbo. And as we cruise over here, we got our cases lined up. They're all primed. And then we've got our digital reloading scale. So 
should be ready to go. Got my powder trickler and a box of bullets just happens to be the perfect spacer to get my uh, little trickler here up above my powder pan. So let's start throwing some charges. Now on a side note to all this, I have not neck turned my 7mm WSM brass. Uh, I actually just recently got a neck turning tool from k and Precision and I definitely want to get into turning my necks. However, I don't have a uh, ball micrometer just yet. I'm going to order one very soon, so I don't have a way to really accurately measure uh, my brass. And before I get a good accurate measurement, I don't want to go out cutting out my brass that cost me over a dollar a piece. So we're going to hold off on that for a little bit, but uh, I definitely will be getting into neck turning in a future point in this video series. So this was set up for 6.5 Creedmoor. Let's set this thing up for 7 WSM. Alright, getting in the groove, just trying to keep track of all my different powder charges. So on the left is 63.9. Tap on the case, help that powder settle, because these big bullets, they drop into these cases a long way. And uh, with Retumbo, it fills up the case a lot, so it's going to be almost a compressed charge on even the low charges. The high charges will be compressed. Nothing crazy over the top, but you can hear it crunch as you see the bullet, they're full. So 63.1 grains, need to go for 63.9. There we go. And that's the process. Like I say, I'm not going to bore you guys with the whole thing. So I'll continue on with this and then we'll jump ahead to seating. All right, so I've got my dummy round made up. This one's 25 thousandths off the lands. So I'm measuring off the O-drive of the bullet with my Hornady comparator tool and my caliper. So let's take a look here. So it's 2.240 base to O-drive. So now let's see the bullet, let's see where this puts it. Don't need my priming arm in there anymore. But I am gonna need a bullet. So let's drop a bullet in. This is the Hornady die. It's got a floating collar design, so it helps uh, get the bullet right in the center. I'll bring that down, rotate it, pull that out. A little bit of smoke left over from when I was uh, doing the smoke test on my lands. 2.253, so I need to bring that in 10 thousandths. Just a little twist on the die, and I'll see where that puts it. Another cool thing about these Hornady dies is that you can actually replace the seating stem inside them, and uh, you can get them to fit your bullet really well. Zeroing out my calipers on my dummy round. And this one's still got ten thousandths to go. Let's twist it in. Let's see the bullet. That's one thousandths off, so we'll call that good. And then we'll seat the next one and see if see where that one compares. Once we're done seating these four bullets, we're gonna go ahead and take a sharpie and label them. Rotate it 180 degrees, seat it again, and just hoping for more consistency that way, the less we run out. So that one's three thousandths out. Let's push this in just a touch. Something I found really interesting, I don't know if it's this cartridge or how much neck tension I've got on these bullets or whatever. My Lee seating die does a more consistent seating than my Hornady die does. I don't know if it's just because there's fewer moving parts or what, but I get better results with my Lee seating die, which is a cheaper die. So if you're worried about your Lee dies not being super precise or as good as the others, there's nothing to worry about. Let's check this one. Negative one thousandths. So 
we're right in there. We're gonna call this good. Uh, actually, no, let me just seat this last one and I'll show you me labeling it and then I'll skip the rest for you guys. Negative half thousandths, so that one's good. Got my sharpie here. This is my low charge on the left. So these are all 63.9. I'm just going to put an R next to it for Retumbo. So there you go. That's what I do. I label it. I'm going to throw them all in the case. That way, if they spill out later, then it's not hard to figure out which one is which. And that's going to be the end of part one, guys. So I appreciate you watching. This is all loading it up. Uh, the next part, I'm going to go shoot it, maybe throw a little shooting footage in there. And then we're going to talk about the targets, uh, kind of how I uh, go through the data, what I see, what I want to do next. And then uh, we'll choose a good shooting round. And then we're going to go ahead and do a jump test. So stick around in the series. It should be good. Hopefully by the end of this, we're going to have these things shooting really awesome. And then uh, we're going to go out and test them at really long range. Um, I'm hoping that these might be my ticket to 2,000 yards. We'll have to find out. So stick around. should be a good series. Appreciate you watching. We'll talk to you in the next video.